What about some of the other popular candidates? What do you think about AOC? I don't know if she self-identifies as a socialist or not. She, she does self-identify as a, as a democratic socialist. I think she was a very inspiring figure for, for a lot of um, people. She was kind of out of this Bernie wave of the first set of Bernie candidates in 2018 that identified with him instead of the Democratic Party establishment. I think that she's still developing as a politician. And it's very difficult when you're in a deep blue district and when you don't often have to worry about re-election or talk to but modulate your rhetoric to win over swing voters in your district, but then you're immediately a national and cultural figure. Mm -hmm. So AOC basically goes from her views, which are compelling, and in my mind, a lot of her, her programmatic views are compelling, uh, wins her district, and then has her own rhetoric, which to me, compared to Bernie, owes itself more to the academic left and the way that a lot of the left has learned to talk. I don't mean academic in the sense that she's like a Marxist or, or whatever else, but academic in the way that she may be using at times like confusing language to convey basic points when she gets into like the like language of intersectionality and whatever else. Especially in the context of cultural issues and stuff like that. Exactly. Instead of just the plain spoken Bernie, like, yeah, discrimination is, is wrong. If you ask me about a cultural issue, I'll come down on the same side as AOC, I'm sure, you know, nine plus tens out of, uh, uh, times out of 10. But I'll try to root it into just basic, like, yeah, treat people with respect, you know, and they'll treat you with respect. And that's the way we should govern our civic sphere, you know, and we don't need to talk about, about intersectionality to, to, I think, get that. But so there's that rhetoric. But she's not just a regular congressperson in a deep blue district. She's also a national and international cultural and political figure. So she's now a spokesperson because of largely like a media event of her surprising upset election and her being, you know, young and like being really connected to this post Bernie moment. And I think amid these constant one attacks on her from the right, and also this media attention and this notoriety, she hasn't really modulated or adjusted her audience, her rhetoric. And how do you win over someone who really hates a lot of your ideas, but might actually believe in some of your policies? Mm -hmm. And um, I think she's been um, ineffective, quite frankly, in the last year making that transition. Whereas I think other politicians who are not so far left um, who don't identify as socialists, but let's say a John Fetterman has managed to become more effective. And I don't think it's a question of character or whatever else. And I, I like AOC, so I don't want to put it so harshly. But I think a lot of it has to do with her being a Congress person in a deep blue district and Fetterman being running for statewide office in a, you know, quote unquote, purple state. Um, but at her best, at her best, she does it. But it's like glimmers. You, it, It's kind of like... um. I don't know what's what sport are you biggest fan of? I'll give you a sports analogy. <laughs> I like the NFL. I mean, uh, NFL is up there. Uh, Soccer is up there, but probably UFC. Okay, well, I can't give you a good analogy for any of those, but it's, <laughs> oh, it's like it's like a raw prospect, yeah. like you know, someone who who shows glimmers of hope. So they were drafted really high, and then they bounce from team to team, and you're like, I'm clinging on to my AOC stock, but um, but I think that that she needs to be self-critical enough and her team needs to be self-critical enough to know that the goal is not merely to be a national cultural figure and win a re-election in your deep blue district. The goal has to be to become truly a national political figure, which will require changes. A unifier, an inspiring figure about the ideas that she represents. Definitely. And, and she has other things against her. Like, I'm obviously class-focused, but there's no denying i think that some of the hostility to her is like is sexism you know it's rooted in i think people um wanting to see her fail or whatever else but that's only some of it you know i think some of it otherwise is her um uh, struggling to relate to people who don't have a lot of her her you know starting points as far as moral and ethical beliefs yeah but she's actually great at flourishing in all the all the attacks she's getting she's she's doing a good job with that and a lot of those attacks would break me if i'm being honest yes that, that's that's <laughs> the amount of that's fire fantastic. she's under 
Um, but you don't want that to become a drug to where you just get good at being a national figure that's constantly in the fights and are using that for attention and so on. You still want to be the unifier. And that's the tricky, tricky switch. Do you, do you think there's a chance there's a world in which she's able to modulate it enough to be a unifier and run for president? And when? I think she's very far away from being able to do that. I think that um, even other politicians that are also polarizing within the squ squad in terms of what they say or their ideas, or whatever else, are very effective communicators like Ilhan Omar and others. Um, I think I think AOC. I mean, that's my hope, right? My hope is that someone like AOC um, could. Uh, the last year plus have not has not been extremely promising you know in, in my in my mind in part because she's become or she's continued to position herself as a lightning rod cultural figure whereas i think a national political figure needs to pick their spots and also pick their moment for changing their their rhetoric and adjusting to their audience and i think she does it in certain environments but that needs to be your national message when you're out there um, you need to be speaking towards the not already um, converted. And I think Bernie does that. Bernie strips his politics down to the basics. So I agree with you spiritually, but I also, we also have an example of Donald Trump winning the presidency. Isn't some, isn't some of the game of politics that's separate from the policy being able to engage in rhetoric that's that leads to outrage and then walking through that fire with grace. First of all, I think Trump was is kind of a unique personality in American history. So it's it's hard to 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 um compare anyone to to Trump. But don't you think AOC is comparable in terms of the uniqueness in the political system we're in or no? I or think, is Trump I think Trump much is, more was much more of a firebrand anti-establishment force um in that and i mean this negatively for what it's worth because i, I you know disagree with, with trump but he was willing to set fire to the republican um uh establishment right uh he was able to self-fund you know largely his campaign and he already was a media figure without them uh aoc has been much more cautious for the democratic party establishment in part because she's not trying to run a national political campaign right now for the outside like a five percent chance i could be president let me set fire to everything she's trying to help people and help her constituents through the game of getting committee appointments and you know getting wins in the margins and i, th I think that's understandable for what it's worth. But in the process, I think, what's the difference between AOC and a progressive Democrat? During 2016, it used to be pretty easy to say the difference between the Bernie Kratz and a progressive Democrat, right? Because we were establishing our own outside third force in American politics. We're, you know, you could knock on the door of a lot of people who would end up voting for Trump, and they would say, oh, I have a lot of respect for, for Bernie, or whatever. And they were still going to not vote for him. But he wasn't considered part of the Democratic Party milieu. Um, I think now with AOC, there's a much closer association of AOC and her policies with ordinary um, Democrats, where she needs to draw stronger distinctions. She doesn't need to do it like um, Trump did with just, man, I forgot all of them, though I found some of them amusing in the moment, like all his nicknames about oh, Lion Ted Cruz and, then, and the rest, you know? Um, but I do feel like uh, she needs to, um, yes, uh, differentiate herself a bit more, but then also just keep her language simple. Trump was more complex than Bernie um, in his, his literal language, but he was repetitive and there was kind of a rhythm and a cadence to Trump's speech. I think AOC needs to, like Bernie, reduce her rhetoric down to a couple key lines and signatures and focus her politics not on 20 issues, but on three or four mm -hmm. most important issues and have that message discipline. Bernie will do an interview with you and he'll write down, I hope you do interview Bernie, um, mm -hmm. but Me too. he'll write Bernie. down like five things and I'm like, yeah, I'm only going to talk about these five things. Yeah, ask me about this? Okay, I'm talking about these five things. So that's a message discipline that Bernie has been exemplary on. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, but I think that's learned. That could be developed. I think she could develop it. Listen, I hope... I'm answering your question, I think, not the way I should answer it, being someone, you know, 
<laughs> broadcasting to um to people on the on the left and 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 you know elsewhere um i hope aoc goes in that direction i just think that she has a lot going against her just because she's already a national figure and she's in a deeper blue district but but we need to root our politics then in working class people and a lot of districts that i don't know the the type of kitchen table conversations are i hate that cliche but i just used it but a lot of these these conversations are just different in their tone and cadence and it's not just a question of i you know fetterman or tim ryan in ohio and kind of just white working class voters i mean working class voters of any race mm-hmm. um there's their day-to-day needs and the day-to-day things they want to talk about is just at a different plane than you know uh a Met Gala cultural statement. Yeah, I mean, it's clear that you respect and love her and, and would like to see uh, different ways. I mean, she's young, so the different mm-hmm. trajectories that she could develop that would ultimately uh, make her a good candidate. I'm just looking at odds here, for, and I disagree with them. I'm buying AOC stock here, given these odds. So uh, in terms of Democratic, who's going to win the 2024 election? So that includes running and winning. Uh, on the Democrat side is 18% chance for Biden, 7% chance for Kamala Harris, Gavin Newsom at 6%, Michelle Obama at uh, 3%, Hillary Clinton at 2%, and AOC at 1.5%, and then Bernie at 1%. So uh, I would not buy AOC at that mark. I would buy Biden like crazy, though. I'm, I'm not a gambling man, but I would, I would totally toss a, toss a G at Biden at that amount. AOC at one point five percent chance. I think it's. I think it's. I don't think she she runs. Um, you don't think she runs? Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that's... I, don't, I don't think Bernie will primary Biden either. I mean, he, but if Biden doesn't run, then obviously it's an open field. 